This podcast is brought to you by Kiefer Her. Whether you're feeling the effects of menopause or your menstrual cycle, discover what's key for you in less than five minutes with tailored supplement recommendations, information and insights on kieferher.com. Hi, I'm Renee. And I'm Donna. Welcome to the Key for Her podcast. In this series, we aim to educate and open up honest conversations with both medical professionals and real life women. We want to shine a light on those topics that sometimes go unspoken about and help empower women to know what is key for their health and well-being. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Key for Her podcast. Today, Renee and I will speak with Michelle Hone from Fit Clinic. Um, your team of nu- nutritionists who specialize in female health, the Fit Clinic has worked with thousands of women, empowering them to understand their bodies so that they can reach optimal health and feel their best. Michelle and her team support women throughout all life stages, helping them to optimize their hormonal health, fertility, and supporting them through pregnancy and beyond. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks a million for joining us. Um, so where do we start? Where do we start? <laughs> We've loads to talk about. Like so, we have three hours. <laughs> I know and we probably could talk about it for that long, but I suppose uh, we've so much to talk about. So at start, we'll start at the start. So how did you get started in this area? And tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so I suppose I went on, I started in sports science in DCU way back when, and I then really quickly straight away went on and did a PhD in nutrition. And I set up a page called the Fit Clinic and I kind of just wanted to, I suppose with a PhD, you get very pigeonholed into one Mm. specific topic. And I was like, okay, I want to be able to be really well read in other areas like if I want Mm -hmm. to be a nutritionist so I was like I set up this page and I wanted to take research articles and make them really easy for people to understand and very quickly people started to come to me and say oh we want I want you to be my nutritionist and I was like no no this is not what this is about like I was like oh god like I can't possibly ask people for money this is insane um and my husband at the time was like this is insane like you're literally like struggling through your PhD so like you're broke. So I was like, okay, right. I'll just take on like two clients. And that is literally how it started. It's just so it was never my intention to be self-employed. And now we have a team of 12 nutritionists. Like they're so, they're amazing. They're absolutely brilliant. So we specialize in female health because as you guys know, there's so much that you can do from a nutrition, supplementation, and lifestyle perspective to really optimize someone's health and just give them a better quality of life. And then I suppose really we started to niche more into female hormones and fertility when it kind of came for me personally to a point where I was like, okay, let's kind of start thinking about trying for a baby. And there was just no information about what I could be doing to optimize my health so went to the GP like we all do and all they will say to you or all I've ever heard them say to anyone is take folic acid and come back to me in six or 12 months depending on your age six or 12 months if nothing has happened and the course which feels like an eternity by the way because as soon as you decide to start trying you want to be pregnant yesterday yeah and you're there out with your ovulation sticks going when is it happening? Why is it happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just this lack of information. And then ultimately for women and for couples, if they don't get pregnant after six or 12 months, depending on their age, more than likely it's it's some sort of a medical intervention or some sort of fertility assistance that they'll go for. When we know from the research, and I started to dig in the research when I started trying for a baby, there is so much that you can do to optimize your health before trying to conceive. So I always use the saying, it takes 12 months to make a baby, not nine months. So trimester zero is what we call it. So there is a critical kind of four month period before conception where we can really, really like do the work in terms of nutrition, supplements, exercise, lifestyle to optimize the health of the egg. So that's a kind of three, four month window. And then in terms of sperm, it's to, it's to optimize that for the kind of two, kind of even two, two to three months before conception. So sperm will obviously have a shorter life cycle, whereas obviously with women were born with their eggs, but the eggs go through this really cool maturation process over that three or four months where it's re- they're really, really susceptible to what we're doing with our lifestyle. So 
we what we want to do is we want to like wrap a safety blanket around them and protect them from oxidative stress protect them from inflammation and just give them all of the raw, raw materials that they need in order to copy the correct number of chromosomes become a pregnancy and yeah the outcome of being a healthy baby so that's essentially where my interest in fertility nutrition came from that's so fascinating. So you pretty much have to go into sort of a boot camp. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> pre, pre-planning boot yeah. camp. So I pre- call it like supercharging. And- yeah, it's like supercharging your eggs and sperm before conception. And a lot of people still don't know about this. Um, so it's just, it's kind of, I'm really, really trying to change the narrative around it. So like mm-hmm. we should be ultimately thinking about I suppose conception long before like three to four months before we even want to get pregnant Um, and whereas a lot of people come to us when they're at the end of their tether do you know what I mean yeah yeah and they're probably really stressed out and let's talk about that because uh like you said and I love the way you've such a holistic approach to this and it's it's many things that you need to look at uh in order to get ready get in your little boot camp and planning for that um but stress Talk a bit about stress and like you said, people only seek help when they have hit a problem. So yeah. maybe we would discuss that a bit. So I think when it comes to stressors and stress, like we instinctively think of psychological stressors, like, oh, why am I getting pregnant or financial stressors and those kind of things. But stressors are also like things like what we're doing with our body. So exercise is a stressor on our body. And if we're doing too much exercise, that can be that can be a negative thing for fertility. So it's really about like trying to strike the balance between yes, exercise is going to be really beneficial in ways for fertility, but if we're doing too much, then it's going to be going over the other mm-hmm. direction. So that like exercise is a stressor. People like a lot of people come to us who are in like in like big calorie deficit so they're not eating enough they're trying to lose weight that's a stressor on your body weight loss is going to be a stressor not getting sufficient sleep fasting skipping meals so as I said we routinely think about okay well I'm really chill and I'm really zen like why am I getting pregnant like well what are you doing in the gym and what are you doing with your nutrition and are you supporting yourself with the right supplements so it's really important that when we talk about stress we're not just talking about what's going on in our heads. That's what I am always trying to, to, to talk about is to make people aware of what they're doing. Because a lot of people will come to us and they'll be waking up first thing in the morning. You guys know your cortisol, your stress hormone is already at its highest. That's what wakes us up in the morning to get out of bed. And a lot of people will be running to the gym. They'll be skipping breakfast. They'll be doing fasted hit style training sessions. They might have a coffee on top of that, which again, we know is going to increase our, our stress hormones. And then they finish their gym session and they're like, oh, well, I'll get, I'll, I'll just fit. I'll just eat lunch later on. Mm. And like cortisol on top of cortisol. And, cotton. and so it's really, really important that we look at what we're doing in our day to day and see, okay, maybe we need to pull back a little bit. Maybe we need to have a good breakfast or maybe we need to make sure we're not skipping meals or pull back on the calorie deficit and the weight loss. So it's just more nurturing of, kind of yeah, type exactly. thing. Yeah, exactly. A nurturing yeah. body. Yeah. hundred percent. Because ultimately our body doesn't understand the difference between psychological stress and yeah. physical stress. So the way our body sees it is like if we're stressed in work or we're skipping meals, it's like saying to her body, I'm running away from a bear. Like, yeah, I was just going to say that. This is not a, a safe time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not so a safe time to get knocked so up. Like, well, if she can't look after herself and she's running away from a predator and a threat mm-hmm. every day of the week, then maybe it's not a good idea to bring a baby into this scenario. Because that's yeah. just, ultimately, it's, it's you have to kind of go back to that evolutionary perspective, do you know? And in most cases, if you're, you know, um, planning this with a partner, um. So you have two people and they're all of their uh, lifestyle habits and all of their stresses coming together to try and align. (laughs) It's, it's gotta be hard, right? Um, When you have like today's life being as stressful as it is, and then you have work and you have all these other things and trying to get your nutrition, right? So yeah, the two people trying to align, I, I suppose, do you find that, can be quite difficult from the clients that you meet. So what's really interesting is 
anyone who comes to us looking for help with their fertility, it's always the woman. Yeah. And I do, I, I offer discovery calls for people who are thinking about signing up. They're not really sure about how the process works. So I'm like, let's just have a little chat. And the amount of clients, guys, that have come to me and they've been like, like, okay, my nutrition is this, my, I don't skip meals. I sleep really well. I'm on top of my supplements. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh my God, you're like the perfect client. Like, why aren't you getting pregnant? So I'm like, talk to me about your partner. And they're like, oh no, don't even bring him into the equation. He doesn't eat, even eat vegetables. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. And he's tab- or he or the partner, he or she is thinking, right, well, we have a baby coming in and, you know, we need to start planning. There needs to be more money. There's more stress is coming I in know. on that side. Yeah. And it's, it's a we lot, right? Like we kind of tend to take the burden on us when it comes mm. to fertility overall, even if you're just thinking about trying to conceive or if there's any issues, we tend to be like, oh, well, it, it must be me. Um, so it's really, really important. Like it takes two to tango. The genetic material to make an embryo, to make a baby comes from two people. Like it yeah. is so important that they are on the same journey, that preconception journey with you. I think that's so, so important. And so, for them keeping their nutrition right as well and to perhaps stop smoking and ease off the booze as well that if they want their swimmers really healthy they they need to make that effort as well and I suppose there could be even when people are um, trying for a baby there could be that thing in the back of their mind that you know maybe he's not fully committed yet and you know to to actually saying yeah I'm ready for a baby there could be like a psychological thing there that's possibly even holding um, either partner back or I was thinking as well before I ever got pregnant I was always afraid oh my god what if I put on so much weight that could be that could be like an emotional thing in the back of your head is that a big part yeah and especially for women I think as well they might be worried yeah, a hundred percent. Like ultimately we don't have the research to show like if someone doesn't hundred percent feel mentally ready, mm. we don't know if that does have an effect, but it does make sense. And I have seen cases where it that kind of reigns true, if you know what I mean. So it is just important again, like to kind of sit down with each other and be like, okay, are we 100 percent committed to this? Are we in this together? And one thing that I always talk about with um our clients is like let's like let me talk to your partner because if it's you relaying the information like it becomes this almost like teacher pupil situation like a dictatorship and honestly it creates more stress and arguments than like do you know what I mean it's just so critical that it doesn't make sense yeah so it's so important so I always say to them, like, show them my Instagram or show them this video so that it's not you telling them what to do. It's it's you Mm -hmm. helping them empower themselves to understand that what you do in the two months before we try for a baby is potentially going to like massively impact the the outcome of this entire situation. Um, so it's important yeah. that it doesn't become this like dictatorship, like, oh, like snatching, snatching the phone out of their pocket or do you know what I mean? Like obviously if they could keep their phone in their pocket, it's it's been shown again in research to be um not ideal for for um semen parameters um or like giving out to them if they come home when they've had a few drinks in them and stuff like yeah. that. It's yeah. important they empower themselves. So that because ultimately you guys know that when you're working with someone, if they don't understand the why of why they're changing their behavior, it's never going to stick. So they have to understand the science behind it and have that knowledge and empower themselves. And sometimes if they hear it from an expert like you, <laughs> rather, rather than their other half, they're like, okay, yeah, I'll totally yeah. do that. And she's probably saying, I've been yeah. telling you this for months. For months and he's like, yeah. oh, I'll listen to her. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but, if somebody yeah. is is very overwhelmed and this is all new to them and they're thinking, yeah, this is the way we want to go now. And um, like, where where do you start? Can Is there pillars that you should be looking at um, in like exercise food maybe if you could just cover that it'd be great yeah so like the first thing like we kind of bring our clients through like a fertility checklist so just kind of get their their up-to-date bloods done just make sure everything's in the right place the next thing is like okay are you getting a regular menstrual cycle because if you're getting a regular menstrual cycle you're more than likely ovulating and therefore you can get pregnant so a lot of people aren't even aware of this like you have to have a regular menstrual cycle in order to get pregnant because you need to ovulate Um, obviously as well like teaching them okay when are the when are the days you can actually get pregnant so you can actually only get pregnant you can actually only get pregnant one day in a month. Mm. 
but sperm is going to survive in the female body for maybe even like five, maybe even six days. So you have a kind of a, a six day window where you are fertile. Um, so yeah, in terms of our fertility checklist, it's making sure that our bloods are in place. Um, our thyroid function is obviously going to be really critical um, going into pre- um, pre-pregnancy. Um, potentially a semen analysis, especially if it's been like a couple of months and you've been trying to conceive, I definitely recommend a semen analysis. I say this to people, they're checking absolutely everything with themselves. They- and I'm like, has your partner's house to be semen analysis? It's like, they need to be able to swim to get yeah. it. <laughs> yes. Um, they've done all a full battery of tests. And I'm like, they, we haven't even, these, this is the basics, you know? Um, and then in terms of nutrition, like the real kind of golden rule around infertility and what the, all of the research is suggesting is that it's really around a Mediterranean style diet. So all of okay. your different fruits, veg, whole grains, olive oil, good fats, like avocado and stuff like that. Your oily fish is going to be really important. So ultimately, if you look at that diet, it's really colorful. It's really nutrient rich and it's going to have loads of antioxidants and loads of anti-inflammatories, which is what we want to try and do, which is really what we want to try and do for our eggs and sperm and um, preconception. So Mediterranean diet would be my number one tip. Um, in terms of supplementation, it's really about your like good quality prenatal and um, with methyl folate in it. That's really important potentially an omega-3 if you're not eating oily fish um, and even potentially additional vitamin d especially from the from the months of halloween to uh, st patrick's day um, yeah, when we're not getting enough sun at all yeah, exactly. especially in ireland <laughs> let's talk a bit more about the menstrual cycle and it being in a good place and you feel like um it's good and regular like what, what would be your kind of a key signs of a healthy cycle and what would somebody try to achieve in that space and especially if they're coming off a birth control is there time that they need to give their body to come off that birth control I know they're all very different but then you know to get to a place where you're like okay things are good now so Mm -hmm. just to give them an idea where they should be at and what would be considered a normal healthy cycle yeah. So ideally what we would look for is for clients to be in between tw- getting a period every 26 to 32 days, like ideally 28, but 26 to 32 is perfect. Even kind of pushing it a little bit further to 35, anything less than 26, we don't love to see. And the reason for that is our menstrual cycle is split up into two phases, our follicular phase and our luteal phase. So after ovulation, you have your luteal phase and after ovulation in that phase, that's when you get pregnant or you can get pregnant. And the issue that we sometimes see is women who have a much shorter cycle, like 25, 24, even 23 days, is that their luteal phase is quite short. So it could be nine or 10 days. And ultimately that stage is so important because that's the really, really early stage of pregnancy when we need to keep our progesterone high. So what can happen is if that phase is too short, we can be shedding the lining of the uterus and getting a period and that embryo didn't really have a chance to do what it needed Mm. to do and take hold. So that's why I say that we like to see um, women have their cycle length be kind of no less than 26 days. That would be ideal. Um, And then in terms of like your healthy period, it's just making sure that it is um, like a good color. It's not like you will, like for a lot of people, we will get like kind of a little bit of like brown discharge and spotting beforehand. And in terms of like, of blood loss and the total blood loss that you should see kind of over the course of your period is kind of in around like 80 mils and kind of to put that into context for people that's like two like shock glasses basically of of blood and so that would be that would be a sign of of a healthy period and obviously making sure that we're not getting like there will be certain um symptoms like with pms like that there might not be, you may, might not be able to get away from like a little bit of cramping, but when our cramping is debilitating and we have to be popping painkillers or we're taking days off work, that is a sign that there is something amiss and we need to, we need to address that. So just making sure that we don't have any really debilitating symptoms when it comes to our PMS. Very good. So you've done your little boot camp. you've kind of, you're eating well. And um, if, if I, I'd say somebody had come off birth control, they come to you. What's the kind of process then? Uh, do you, do you, do you go through a bootcamp program? Is that what you offer? Yeah. So when it comes to post pill, like it's, it's important to remember that like everyone's going to be different. So mm. 
There are some women who will come off the pill and literally ovulate 14 days later and mm. get their period one month later, which is amazing. For some women, like the kind of ballpark figure is it can take up to six months for your own hormones to kick in and regulate. Because ultimately what's happened while you're on the pill is you've you've stopped your hormone, hormones doing what they're naturally supposed to do. So for some people, it can take a while for their, their own system to just reboot and do what it needs to do. And then I always say as well, like, look at how your periods were before you went on the pill, because that's generally a good sign of what they're going to be like afterwards. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like if a lot of women have went on the pill maybe when they were younger because they didn't have a period or, at all. So they were doing it to quote unquote regulate their cycle. And mm-hmm. um, so if it was a case that you didn't have your period years ago, it's possible that you're going to still have that underlying issue. And this is kind of my, without going into off on a tangent, like this is my issue with the pill being taken to quote unquote regulate your own hormones mm. or, or kickstart your period because ultimately all it does is stops ovulation it stops you to having your own period so it's just I for us it's really about re-educating or educating people that if you've been on if you were put on the pill to regulate your cycle and to to get your period back you actually haven't had a period in like 10 years because you've been I know and this is years. this blows people's minds when we tell them this as well they actually uh, the basic stuff we weren't taught properly and the fact that when you're on the pill, you're not ovulating and that's how it all works. It's, it's just not information that women widely know. So I think it's important that we covered that today. And so the idea is that when you're coming off the pill, or, um, that you're trying to get your, your, your cycle back regular and get it used mm. to ovulating again. So that's why you need the time. Cut yourself some right? slack as well because a lot of people might think they're coming off the pill and then they think oh I want to get pregnant straight away but they need to understand that those hormones can take time to reboot and Mm. start working again properly and the other thing with like as you said with people coming off the pill and just wanting to get pregnant straight away there's nothing wrong with that but you have to remember in metabolizing the oral contraceptive pill, you create nutrient deficiencies. Mm. So if you are on the pill and you're not taking some sort of a multivitamin or some sort of a supplement, you're more than likely going to have some sort of a nutrient deficiency, whether it's B vitamins, magnesium, zinc, because in order to metabolize the pill, it kind of robs you of those nutrients. So it wouldn't be ideal to come off the pill and then get pregnant straight away without repleting yourself and mm. building yourself back up and giving yourself those nutrients again. So that's important to, to bear in mind as well. I think, so you're um, sorry, go on, yeah. fill, sorry, fill your cup back up um, mm. after and making sure you look after yourself. Sorry, Ren, I cut across you. I was just going to say there about, you get told about folic acid uh, a lot of the time and everyone knows about folic acid, but, but really it's generally not that well absorbed and they should be looking at L-methyl folate. Yeah. So just explain a little bit about folate and yeah. just about so it. Yeah. yeah, so folic acid is the synthetic version mm-hmm. of your vitamin B9. Obviously, vitamin B9 is really, really critical vitamin, but especially for preconception because it's going to reduce the incidence of neural tube defects. The issue of folic acid when you take it in supplement form is it has this big massive process that it needs to go through in order to be to com- in order to be converted into something that we can use by our body and that's called methylfolate the issue as well is that up to 60% of the population have a genetic mutation yeah. that actually hinders this conversion process so it makes the conversion process more difficult and more complicated so it means that less and less of that actual that actual vitamin b9 is going to be absorbed and used by your body Whereas if you take it in supplement form in L-methyl folate form, it's already in its active form. So you're getting, you're bypassing that big complex route that it had to go through and you're getting it in its active usable form and actually absorbing it. So it's much more bioavailable. So it's again, it's it's a good sign of a good supplement because it means that the developers have actually gone and done their research because this is all the latest research. Mm-hmm. And the thing is as well, you guys probably know that l methylfolate is more expensive to put into a supplement yeah. in comparison to your non-methylated B vitamins. So yeah, it's really important that when you're looking for a good quality supplement that it's 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 methylated folate instead. Yeah, because we, was... we made sure we used that in, in both of our supplements, um, key perimenopause and because it's really important for um, those going through uh, perimenopause and menopause, but also just a normal, healthy, regular menstrual cycle. You know, you just need that folate in there. 
But um, the next thing I wanted to ask about are what are the lifestyle issues that can affect fertility? Like what, what's what's causing different things? Is it um, factors, not just stress, but like in your home or what are you doing on the weekend or like what yeah. is it that's that's um, can affect yeah. it? This podcast is brought to you by our very own brand, Key For Her. Whether you're feeling the effects of menopause or your menstrual cycle, discover what's key for you in less than five minutes with tailored supplement recommendations, information and insights on keyforher.com. Please have 20% off on us by using the promo code KEYPODCAST in all capitals. So the ones that most of us would be aware of that would negatively affect our fertility would be smoking and alcohol consumption. So that would be a big one. And it's not saying that we can't, a lot of people, first question they ask, like, do I have to quit wine in this like three months (laughs) trimester zero? And my saying is when you're trying to conceive, especially you've had quite a complex journey so far, you should nearly act like you're already pregnant. So like, yes. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, it's okay to have like a glass of wine here and there. Just don't be, just don't overdo it. And everyone knows what overdoing it is, you know? Mm-hmm. So that would be a big thing. And then if you really want to get more specific around kind of like environmental factors, I'm always, I talk, talk about this a lot is what we're doing in our kitchen and what we're doing in with our homeware and stuff like that. So it's really simple example is like, what are you drinking your water out of? So like, are you drinking your water out of a plastic bottle? Because like not to be, I'm always really mindful that I don't want to come across as scaremongering, but we don't really have the research in terms of what these different plastics, mm-hmm. like yeah. what their negative, what the negative impl- health implications are on our body, especially when we're in that preconception window or when we're pregnant. And um, like we know, for example, that BPA is negative for our health. We also know that it can cross the placenta and actually like reach reach our placenta and through the baby. So we know from the research that ha- that has negative health effects and therefore it's been removed. So you'll see a lot of bo- bottles that will say BPA free. Right. Yeah. The issue is that these have been replaced by what's called BPS, which is basically just the exact same thing. Same but different. Same, same but different. <laughs> oh, yeah. So a lot of people will be like, yeah, no, my bottle is BPA free. I'm like, no, it should be stainless steel or glass. That would be the best thing to do. Yeah. And the same with your Tupperware, like what you're bringing your soup in for like for lunch, like have that as a like, glass or stainless steel. And um, also being mindful of like what we're like smearing on our body and all of our cosmetics and stuff like that. Obviously, like I'm not saying don't wear makeup, like I'm clearly wearing makeup now, but just being mindful of maybe if you could opt for like the non-paraben, like um shampoos and conditioners and lotions and stuff like that. And um, the other one is like air fresheners and plug-in scents and colour. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, here's we're Renee. Singing now. From yeah, the yeah, same yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like this, when, I hate like, them. said for this but like fragrant like the the fragrances like are basically made from a thing called fragrance which are which again they're just chemicals so like when you smell something nice it's like you're just sniffing chemicals and um, like I would like and again like for a lot of people listening this is like whoa this is like this is way too much for me but we work with a lot of people who are just kind of looking to go that extra 10 percent just to be yeah. have the peace of mind that they're doing everything that they can and um, so just little tips like only wear your perfume for special occasions. And it's kind of nice like to only yeah. wear it for special occasions. Um, but yeah, like your cooking utensils, like using stainless steel or wood, as opposed to like your plastic ones, like just stuff like that, your colander, your kettle, making sure they're from stainless steel. Do you have any? I love I, I love that uh you know, acting like you're already pregnant and living your life in that healthy way and looking after yourself and making sure that everything you're exposing yourself to, you could be exposing to the, your baby to, you know? So it's, it's a great way of thinking as well um, when you're trying to get in the headspace, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And I'm, hey, do I'm, you have any good ones? Do you have well, any like, good I'm just, um, I'm really into the no fragrance thing and having like cleaning products that don't smell and I can't stand uh, uh, scented candles. But mm-hmm. even if they're, so-called natural they always seem to have some other chemical in there with them that once they're lit I can just my sinus starts to um, starts to run I got this headache and I can literally I feel like I can taste it in my mouth as well and 
my son had come home from school and he had gotten a spray deodorant off someone. I was there going, sniffing around the house like I was there. I'm going to find this and I know it's somewhere. <laughs> Get it out. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think it's our own body's way of telling us that this is not right. This mm-hmm. is, um, it, it's it's not good for me, like just kind of cut it out. And I know for some people, um, fragrances are absolutely fine, but they could also be doing damage in an, in another way that they just don't notice. And like that, if they want to go the extra 10% to perhaps s- stop them. Yeah. And I think as well, like not only do we not have the research on specific ingredients, but we definitely don't have the research on all of the cumulative ingredients that we're exposed to in a given Mm. day. And it's really about that cumulative load and what kind of effect is that having on our body? What kind of effect is it having on our periods, on our menstrual cycle, on our egg health? So like what I always say is like the best way to, to, to kind of put it is what we don't know, we don't know. So like if we don't know the negative health Like we don't know, we don't know basically. So we don't know the negative health implications of these things. So it's just easier to just like take a little bit of a step back from them and just be mindful of making smart swaps. Like it doesn't mean that you have to go and like dump everything in your kitchen, but like when you're making, when you're doing your shop and you need to get your detergent or you need to get your dishwasher tablets or you need to buy a new like water bottle, just be mindful of making a smarter swap. Yeah, because there's small things you're doing every day, but all of that mounts up, right? If you do that over six to 12 months, it's a lot of exposure to these things. So it's like you said, just being very mindful. So you have to take a whole sort of 360 look at your lifestyle and, and, yeah. and everything that you're doing and, and uh, maybe making some new choices, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because your life is going to change anyway the minute you become a parent. <laughs> so you might as well <laughs> start changing exactly. things up. Also, uh, what I wanted to ask as well, um, what are your three key tips for like any couple that or or just single person, anybody that's looking to to get pregnant in the next few months? Like what are the most important things they should consider? I would say nutrition would be a big one. Like the, the biggest tip that I can give is just eat the rainbow. So eat as many different fruits and colored veg like so don't just focus on like look at your nutrition like maybe you're only focusing on your yellows and oranges like get in those greens get in those reds because they all have different nutrients so eat the rainbow they all have different antioxidants that are just going to be really really good for egg health and for sperm health and the other one is like look at your stress what I call our stress bucket so we all have our stress bucket my one might be smaller than yours so I don't have an ability to cope with, with as many stresses as you do so look at it break it down lay it all out and say okay I'm 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 really busy with deadlines and work over the next couple of months. I'm not sleeping great. Therefore, maybe it's better to pull back on the HIIT training. Yes, I'll exercise, mm-hmm. but maybe it's better to prioritize resistance training and maybe keep my sessions 30 minutes instead of an hour long. Um, and maybe it's a good idea to start eating a good, a good like quality breakfast. So again, just looking at your stress bucket, taking all your stresses out, laying them on the table and saying, okay, yes, I can do this. I can get away with this, but maybe I can minimize this or not do this. And then the last one would be, I don't know. It's a good question. Um, Get your partner to look at their stress yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It takes two yeah. tango. It's yeah. yeah. Make sure that you're on the same page. That would be a big one. And it's like, it's a team effort. Like it's yes. not you. And it's not them. just being left to, to her yeah. to, to consider like all the things that she has to think of. There's enough with her. Like, I suppose exactly. he has to do his bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and we, yeah. we developed a uh, key for menstrual and it has loads of the ingredients that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So, um, that could be a great place to start as well to get your menstrual cycle back on track and to make sure that you're looking after yourself. Um, I suppose as well, it's just uh, getting some relaxation time in, not overstressing, right? And yeah. um, what else, guys? Is there any other tips that we can give to anyone listening in? It's a big one. Yeah. Sleep. Like I think like for a lot of people, they're what I call it, their their sleep hygiene isn't great. So like the best way to have like good sleep hygiene is like your room should be like pitch black, like get blackout curtains if you need to. Um, It should be slightly cool. So like not too warm. And what are you doing before bed? Um, So like if you're staring at your laptop or watching. Practicing. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> but like if you're kind of exposing yourself to blue light mm. um, from your laptop, from your phone, from the TV, that's basically telling our body like it's daytime. Our body doesn't understand the difference between sunlight and blue light. So it, in order to like get that melatonin, that sleep hormone, the hormone that we need to have high towards the end of the day, we need to limit our blue light um, exposure kind of in the, I even like have like a little wind down window where you take some time to do like your skincare and have like a shower, anything like that. Like read your book, whatever it is. Um, Make you feel good. Little, yeah, yeah. Have a little ritual for yourself, even if it's only like 15 minutes. One interesting thing. I always remember I heard this. It was on the Ray Dar- Darcy show um, years ago and they were talking to various different couples where they had problems getting pregnant and infertility issues. So they had asked um, a lot of people to basically have sex every day for an entire month. And there was some of those couples where they had been trying for a very long time and all of a sudden they got pregnant. And they were talking to a doctor on the show and what the doctor was saying was, I suppose a lot of people were only looking for day 14 as that must be ovulation day. And that's the day when you just do it. And that's, that's it. But what they had noticed was some people were ovulating a good few days before uh, yeah. They thought they were ovulating or else after like the, the window is so much bigger and that they were saying that because they were having sex every single day. I know it's a big ask, but they did it as I don't you know, think I uh, my husband they did it for, for science. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Be exhausted. Uh, a, a lot of these couples, they ended up conceiving after um, trying for a long time. That's and it's amazing. Just a, maybe just talk a little bit about just that little bit about ovulation and that how it can, it's not always just day 14. It yeah. really can be either side of it because um, it was it was quite interesting. And I it always stuck in my head that. Um, and we talk know, all about the nutrition and stresses, blah, blah, blah. But like getting <laughs> down get, to <laughs> the business. here, you know, you have to plan around that as well. And, and um, do you have any advice there? Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose what's interesting is like the textbook menstrual cycle or what we learn. It's like you ovulate in day 14 and that you get your period oh. after 28 days. But I actually did a talk and I actually I'm going to start doing this more often. I did talk to like 100 people um, a few weeks ago and I was like, OK, hands up who ovulates on day 14. One person. There was only one person who ovulated on day 14. Wow. Yeah. And like the rest are like 11 and 12 and 13. Like so me personally, I I've tracked my cycle for God, like probably the last 10 years. I, I don't think I've ever ovulated on day 14. Not once. That's it. Always. See, but all, all the data out there is all about day 14. Yeah. And I remember when I got pregnant and they were, you know, doing the the dating scan thing and they were like, what day was your last period? And I, I don't know, I told them and they were like, well, that doesn't make sense because you seem to you know, have, you know, gotten pregnant here. And I was like, no, I'm really sure of my dates, but yeah. I think I just ovulated sooner than day 14. So it's a good yeah, job we were doing really, practicing. Yeah, which is possible. And there's no issues with that. There's yeah. no issues with, like, unless you're kind of ovulating after like day 18, 19, 20, that's like, and th- therefore pushing your cycle into like over a 35 day cycle, mm-hmm. that would be kind of, I would say kind of a little bit irregular. We need to just tighten things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, like, and then the other thing is uh, as well around um, how often you should be having sex. So the research shows that you should be having sex every second day in order to optimize your fertility. Yeah. So it's almost like your, the sperm actually needs a little bit of a break. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a time wearing them out. <laughs> so yeah, every second day has been shown in research to be the most effective method. Okay, that's that's yeah. fascinating. That's yeah. really good for people to know. I didn't actually know that myself. So yeah. there you go. So like my rule of thumb is like once your period is finished, then that's the best time to start. Because remember that you're going to be fertile up to six days beforehand, and then a lot of people might ovulate on day twelve. So the easiest thing to do is just sex every second day after your period. Is yeah. Don't finished. miss the magical window. Yeah. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on because I think these are really interesting tips and a lot of people wouldn't have known all of this information. And say, for example, when someone does get pregnant, then do they generally keep coming to see you throughout the pregnancy or do you see them up to a, a point and then what happens after the baby? 
Yeah. So like it generally depends on the person. Like it is nice to kind of see them through for the first couple of weeks, especially, especially if they've had any kind of history of early pregnancy loss in the past. Um, and then after the kind of 12 weeks, then we kind of feel a little bit safe to to wish them farewell. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of people will come back to us in the postpartum period. This is really it, important, I, th- I think. It's so, like, mm. it blows my mind that we give ourselves, like, so much. We nourish ourselves. We look after ourselves in pregnancy. And then everyone, like, stops even taking their multivitamins after they're, they've had a baby, you know? Your baby has robbed you of everything. Yes, this is <laughs> you what I, are, I've been saying this for years. Is- empty empty like, and then yeah. like sleepless nights like who eats that well like in the er, like in those early few weeks obviously you're getting the odd like lasagna and stuff which is great from family members and stuff yeah. but for the most part of your nutrition like it's not well thought out it's not well prepared therefore you're like you're more than likely nutrient deficient so it's and really if you're breastfeeding it's yes it's, it's like you can double down on that exactly. I remember uh, after I had my first baby, my legs were so dry, like from my knees down. I don't know why they were all like you're omega three normally. Yeah, so like that's I would it. Say yeah, your like your omegas or your fatty acids are like your internal moisturizer. Yeah, so like if you've dry skin, a lot of people will be like applying loads of lotion. But sometimes, like most of the time, it's actually internal. It's like let's look. Mm. At your- I think so too. And as well, like you have to remember how high um, breast milk is in fatty acids. Yeah. So more than likely, it was a case that you were just getting robbed of all your fatty oh, acids. Oh, I think so. Towards the end of the pregnancy, my skin had gotten so dry. And I think like that, a lot of people are like, is there anything I could do for your anthem or like that cooking them food? Bring them good supplements and some omega-3s yeah. and make sure mm-hmm. they take them. Because yeah. um, I think for those women that might have postnatal depression it can really be linked with that huge drop off in hormones and if they could possibly support their hormones and keep supporting themselves in that trimester four they could feel so much better because it's bad enough when they're sleep deprived but throw in crazy hormones as well all over the place it, it can literally make you feel awful yeah, I don't even know if they just I'm... start start with supplements and just try that could be their start of their new daily routine looking after themselves because the focus goes straight off of you onto the baby and yeah. you're yeah. almost yeah. invisible for the, yeah. the guts of a year you know and your cup is empty so you got to make sure you're you're looking after yeah, yourself even if it's something as simple as just taking like a good quality multivitamin that's like that's huge for someone yes. who is so depleted postpartum yeah mm. um it's it's something that can happen so easily they just kind of tend to forget about themselves and it's all about the baby but um, and then that baby gets a little bit bigger and then you go and try and do it again and you can't understand why you can't <laughs> because you're exhausted and you're totally <laughs> deficient of everything <laughs> so it's uh, i think the rule here and the key here is you just gotta look after yourself in every way that you can right yeah you can't pour from an empty cup that's it. So, yeah. Michelle, um, how can our listeners find you um, on social or the website? Yeah, so all about you. We're the Fit Clinic on Instagram and the Fit Clinic.e is our website. Super. Brilliant. Thank and you so much. Million. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on the Key for Her podcast. We'd be so grateful if you could hit subscribe, rate and share this podcast with your friends. For tips, tricks and hacks and all things perimenopause, menopause, periods, menstrual cycles and skin health, follow us at Key for Her on TikTok and Instagram. Check out our website keyforher.com for more information.